<laughs> That's all it took. <laughs> <laughs> do we do the pledge to the flag first, or do you want me to start with the budge? Oh, yeah. uh, we can do the pledge. We we'll do the pledge. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Okay. Do you need me to do the roll call vote yeah. first? Uh, Member Steele? Here. Member Lyon Welch? Absent. Member Frederick? Absent. Member Lanford? What? Member Holbrook? Absent. Member Dean? Here. And Member Lake? Here. Thank you. All right. So we'll get started with the budget hearing. So I've used the same template that Terry has used in the past, so we're just going to go through this briefly. Um, just got the list of the board members, the mission and vision statement, and then the key components of the budget, which are revenue expenditures and fund equity. So basically this sheet is an in-depth explanation of what I have used to calculate the 24-25 budget. Um, so with that being said, there's lots of unpredictable factors that go into this budget. Um, we really do not have a state aid budget yet, so we don't know for definite what our foundation allowance is gonna be. Um, so at this point, it's kind of just a guessing game as to where we're gonna land. But what I have done for this budget is I have used $217 per pupil as an increase for the foundation allowance. Um, that is the lowest of what they have projected. And the reason I went with the lowest is because right now there's a lot of things going on with the retirement system and what they're gonna do with the unaccrued liability. So I thought it would be best to use the lowest estimate that they have projected. So I used $217 per pupil for the foundation for an increase, but I also accounted for a 20 per pupil um, decrease. So with that being said, the September count is 90%. How did you figure the 20 less? The 20 less, I looked back at averages on probably the last five years to see what our average per pupil loss was. And it's kind of hard to predict because there's been some fluctuations in how they were calculating, especially based on COVID. So I thought 20 would be a safe estimate. So hoping that it'll come in better. And then um, I have some graphs in the presentation of what our per pupil has done over the past few years. But I just basically tried to use an average of what we have lost. All right. I mean, sometimes they use the birth rate. Right. When you do the... Um, Oh, what is that called? Mid-Cities projections. Mid -cities yeah. projections, yes, yes. Okay. So I used that as well as we know that COVID money is um, pretty much dwindling down. So our ESSER three funds have to be spent by September 30th. So um, I used what we had remaining, what I had projected that we would have left of the ESSER three money in this budget as well. Um, Federal revenues in the projection budget are just basically the estimates that they have provided us with for all of the federal title grants. So I'm just using their estimates. They'll come out with actuals later, and when I do a budget amendment, I'll increase those. Um, the local revenue is budgeted based on historical information as well as the taxable values that I have received from the county. And then for the expenditure assumptions for the 24-25 budget, um, all we plan to include step increases and then a 3% increase across the board. We also included a 20% increase on health insurance. We've been hearing all around the state that um, insurance rates are pretty much going through the roof and we've been told multiple times by Mesa to expect a double digit increase. So we've accounted for a 20% increase to our insurance costs for all staff. And then for natural gas and electricity, I budgeted about a 5% increase over what we have this year. Give or take some, we've had mild winter, rates could go higher, just kind of um, trying to account for that stuff in there. 
Then, as in staffing levels, they're pretty closely aligned with the 23-24 year, except for we've added the addition of two teachers, one at Jefferson and one at Larson, basically to um, help reduce the class sizes in those two buildings. We still have a few positions that we have out there that are posted. They're unfilled, but I have left those positions at the levels they were at of the people who had left. So they're still accounted for in this in this budget projection. So going to the next slide, this is kind of the chart of what the fund equity has done since 2014. So we've just kind of steadily been going up. We had a little dip and we have steadily been increasing the fund equity. Some of that is probably due to the COVID money, just because we've been able to use some of those funds in place of using general funds for normal expenses. So then when you're looking at um, this slide, this is basically just kind of explaining how Proposal A changed the funding for schools in Michigan. So this gives you kind of a chart of what the per pupil allocation has done okay. since 1415. So in looking at that, we steadily increased, which is good news for us. Um, so currently for the 23-24 year, we were at $9,608 per pupil for the 23-24 school year. And then um, with the operating millage, we can't go and ask for more money from the public with the operating millage because that's based on Proposal A, so that's already set. So basically what that does is the state takes into account our taxable values and then they give us the difference of what we don't receive in our um, taxes and so they give us the difference in state aid to equate to what they call the foundation allowance and so this next table is basically just giving you kind of a, a graph chart of the restricted revenues of the state and showing you you know large amounts of their funding comes from sales and use tax and then your individual income tax and then our portion would be the state education tax piece. So, and then we have um, the student growth over, over the last 17 years. And as you can see here, we if you look at the blended count, so the February count is current year, so that's only 10%, and then the September account count is um, 90%. And then they blend that, so that equates to the blended count. So when you look at the blended count in 2007, 2008, we've lost quite a few pupils all the way down to 23, 24. We've had some upticks, just a few, but not, not many to keep up with where we were 17 years ago. And then this is just the bar chart showing where we were at. We're kind of looking like we're leveling back off with where we were in 1415. So we're getting kind of close to where we were. And then this chart just basically shows you how the foundation allowance is calculated, kind of like what I just explained a couple minutes ago, where um, the state takes our taxable values into account and then whatever we don't get in our taxes, then we get from the state to, to come up with a per pupil funding of the $9,608. So again, this is just explaining some of the per pupil foundation allowances and the non-homestead 18 mils, and then what the state contributes equates to the foundation allowance. So again, it's basically taking into account the 90% and the 10%. The Michelle, next, sorry, yep. how, um, how is our kindergarten enrollment coming? I, Do we know I believe we are up. Good. The last I heard, we were up for kindergarten enrollment. Okay. So um, these are just going to be definitions of basic categories in the budget, because you'll see in the budget slides at, towards the end, each of the categories are named these names. And this just basically tells you what is included in those categories. And that's the second page of that. So then we'll move into the final amended budget. So this year's budget, um, 
basically we had a slight decrease in, in local revenue and then of course at the end of the year we're always matching up expenses to revenues with our grant sources because you have to equate to zero when you're talking about grants. So you have to decrease your expenses to equate to the revenue that you've received. So that's a lot of the shifting, but as you can see, there's just slight differences in what the amended amount was. So the revenues for the final year end are 39,990,649, which is a decrease of $1,616,745. So then on the expenditure side of things, again, we had to reduce due to um, grants and making sure everything equates. The other piece of that is, is that you have some expenditures that are not necessarily gonna happen in this fiscal year. We had planned on a special ed bus being delivered this year, that didn't happen. So we're moving that into next fiscal year. So that is included in the 24-25 budget. So that helped to reduce down some of those expenses as well. You'll notice um, in the outgoing transfers and other finances, that number has um, gotten quite large since the original budget, but that was due to basically having the larger um, boiler project and lighting projects, and those all came out of general fund. So in ending, the projected fund balance is $8,698,164, which equates to 21.5%. Um, we leave contingencies in this budget just for unexpected expenses that will come in by June 30th. Plus with having summer school going on, we're still trying to cover some of those expenses and so we won't know, you know actual numbers until June 30th hits and we get all the payrolls run. So that is pretty much it on the general fund budget for this year. Um, then on the preschool budget, basically this is just kind of um, showing what we have received so far this year in revenues. Um, we only had to transfer 65,000 this year from general fund to cover the expenditures of the kids club program. We've had some changes in the program. We increased the rates this year. We're looking to probably increase the rates again next year, just based on where the budget is going to land us. So the expenditures um, increased slightly for them in this program as well. And so the expenditures are $343,252, which is an increase of about $18,000. Um, so the projected fund balance at the end of this year is $583. And again, that just depends on, um, you know, hours of daycare, that's, it's, pretty, it's pretty fluid, I guess you could say, because you just don't know. You don't know if kids are gonna be there full time or what's gonna happen with that. So then we have the food service budget. So the food service budget for this year, um, we had revenues of, $2,548,790. A lot of the revenues for food service are coming in from the federal government because of reimbursement for meals and that type of thing. We've received several grants as well through the food service program to help support breakfast and then also to get new equipment and that kind of stuff. Um, so there were slight increases, but again, it's mainly federal revenues. Um, coming in there and then on the expenditure side of things that was two million six hundred and twenty thousand six hundred and ten dollars which is an increase of two hundred and eight thousand forty one dollars so we're showing that we're going to dip into fund equity by about seventy one thousand eight hundred and twenty dollars which will leave us with a projected fund equity of seven hundred thirty thousand forty eight dollars which the fund it has plenty of monies to sustain that um, that cost so then with the debt service fund, so basically this is just our um, debt service paying back the bond. And you'll notice um, on this one we are fully covered in paying back the bond payments. So this is basically taxes coming in and our payments going out of this fund. So um, the budgeted incoming transfer that you see there of 500,000 is for the QZAB bond which was a 10 year, um, 10 year loan bond and that will be paid off in 2027. So we have a few more years left to pay on that. 
So um, with that being said, the projected fund balance in that account is $4,851,351. So with that, then we have the sinking fund budget. Um, for this year, it's again, mainly just taxable values and um, expenses going out of it, different projects coming out of it. So this year we paid for half of the boiler project at the high school out of the sinking fund. So, um, and the other piece of that, we had some money down towards the bottom, you'll see 500, or $55,067 going out of a sinking fund. That was closing out the old sinking fund, and that was moving that also to apply to the QZAP payment. So in the sinking fund, we have a projected fund balance of $1,460,163 to be used on projects that we foresee upcoming in the next few years. And then lastly, this is the activity um, fund. This is a student activity fund, and this is really based on monies that come in from the students doing fundraisers or other activities in the building, and then obviously you expect them to spend those funds down, their class funds, their athletic activity funds. So this fund is pretty fluid as well. So this projected fund balance is $347,732. Are there any questions on this year's budget? Let's go from back to front. Uh, this okay. activity fund, mm -hmm. $347,000, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Why are we doing that? What, why so, we so basically what those funds are used for, so you're talking about class, like at the high school level mainly, like the bulk of the money is at the high school level. Yeah. So it's the class fund. So they're paying for prom, they're paying for all of those different types of things. Yes. Um, at the elementary level, some of those are building activity funds accounts where they're paying for like field trips and that type of stuff. So it's all student activity driven items basically. So they're raising the money and then it's being spent on their classes items. Or Is there a problem sports. with having 347000 in a fund balance? No, because it's it's a student activity fund, so it's not like you can use those funds in general fund. So as long as they're seeing that the money is, because anytime a class graduates, those funds go into the next class's fund if the other class doesn't determine that they have something or bench or something that they want to they wanna purchase with those. So it's continual, and yes, I mean, you want the classes to spend down those funds and you don't want them to build up. So yes, you definitely want to have them spending them down. But it's not, like, I guess it's not like they're just savings account. I mean, I don't know how to explain it other than it just rolls from class to class. So this is an accumulation of all the classes? Correct. It plays all of the student activity All accounts. of the student so activity So throw in Spanish <coughs> club, throw in any mm -hmm. club or organization. We can get you that whole list. Right. We, and we can get you that. I mean, it's athletics as well. So mm -hmm. like all of the baseball, softball, football, all right. of the athletic activity funds are included in this budget. All right. In the sinking funds, mm -hmm. when do we take the money from the sinking fund to pay the cues at so we can't pay the QZAB out of the new sinking fund money. You could pay it out of the old sinking fund. So the old sinking fund didn't have rules against doing that. This new sinking fund that they have just, when, when you guys got your sinking fund passed, your new one, there's different rules in place that will not allow you to do that. But the old sinking fund rules allowed you to. Is there still, uh a fund balance in the old one? No. That was what that um, 55000 So the money for the Q's app is going to come from the general fund? Correct. Correct. So now all of this, so we split it last year when we paid the Q's app payment. We paid like 444000 out of general fund, and then the remaining balance that was on the old sinking fund went to pay the rest of the Q's when, when does that happen? Uh, July 1st, every year. The debt service fund, what's the interest rate on the bonds? The interest rate on those, ooh, 
I don't have that amount, but it's just the money that is sitting in there that we're paying back, but I don't have that information in front of me right now. All right. And uh, the food service fund, is there a way for us to get some of that money? There absolutely is, and this year, I should have mentioned that when I was talking about the 23-24 budget. So you can collect indirect cost from food service, which basically is anything that is not quantifiable. So I can't tie it directly to food service as an expense. For instance, we have people in this office that do a lot of different things for food service as in doing their deposits or those kind of things. You can charge an indirect cost on those, on those things and the state will set a rate of indirect cost that you can use. So when you're calculating those things, you have to take all of your capital outlay expenses off from the food, for food service expense and then you can multiply it by that rate and it will give you the dollar amount that you can take. I did that this year and so the amount that we have always taken in the past was approximately 23,000 this year. I was able to show that we could take close to 51,000. The problem is, is you have to base it on actual expenses so I backed it off to 45 just in case my expense estimation was a little high in food service so that way I'm close and it's not going to be an issue budgetarily wise on either side of it. So I can take approximately 45000 this year. Can we charge the food service for uh, heating the cafeteria, and the several cafeterias, and cooling the several cafeterias? There's no, unless they're on a separate meters so that's what is cut that's another piece that the indirect costs will cover because you can't charge something that you can't directly quantify that is specific to their area so that's why they say if you can charge indirect costs charge indirect costs because otherwise it has to be on a totally separate meter and be able to say this is directly related to food service all right i think i lost my place <laughs> so on, on the preschool and daycare under the kids club, mm -hmm. is that increases that like staffing or? So are you talking about the increase in expenses? Yeah. Yes. So what has happened um, last year, the director left and so we kind of went without, we didn't really go without a director, we had an interim. Um, we still do have an interim, she's working on getting her certification. But um, so at that point, the director that was before her had benefits and that kind of stuff. So with the interim, she didn't get benefits until she qualified for benefits. So what is happening now is the daycare is open from six to six. So finding people to cover those hours is beginning to become a challenge because you don't have people that want to work until six o'clock at night. So what we're running into is people are getting a lot of overtime or you've got people that are now going to qualify for benefits, which is what is happening in next year's budget because these people are working longer days and you don't have a choice but to offer them benefits because they've met that threshold. Sure. So. Well, then you might get some consistency in employment too. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, so yeah they do a have benefit. a lot of. There's a benefit to it. Right. They do have a lot of turnover there, unfortunately. So. All right. Is there more questions? So we'll go on to the 24-25. I kind of briefly touched on this a little bit. So included in this budget, I have, I have, um, we already talked about on the revenue side that I included a 20 per pupil decrease, a $217 per pupil increase in the foundation. And then I've adjusted federal grant numbers and taxable values. On the expenditure side of things, um, most of the staffing remained the same with the exception of adding two new teachers. We've included a 20% increase on the health insurance. And then um, I included one new bus, uh, one new regular ed bus, as well as the special ed bus that was supposed to come in this year that didn't come in. So I've got two buses in this year's budget. I've also included contingencies in this budget. Um, just to make sure that we're covered in all categories. 
And then I've also um, increased the expenditure for the QZAD payment um, to the 500,000 that will be this year's payment. That will, the QZAD payment will increase in 2025 to 550,000 and it will remain 550 through 2027. So, um, and then it will be paid off in 2027. So the proposed fund balance in this year's budget is $8,120,078. That's a 20.8% fund equity. So that keeps us in line with not dropping below the 18% that is the board requirement. Um, hopefully I'll have some better numbers in November that I can come back with a budget amendment because this is kind of just a shot in the dark based on estimates that everybody has. Big one being healthcare. Healthcare and retirement. Those are the, the two um, big questions hanging out there right now. So you'll see on this preschool budget that I'm showing a large transfer from general fund up to 115,000 to cover this. In order to make this program last and make this program work, we're gonna work with Jesse on increasing rates. I have not included any increases at this time because we need to figure out what we're gonna need to increase um, and look at the numbers. So again, my hope is by November, I'll have some better numbers, um, but I just think increasing the rates that we're charging for the daycare program is gonna be an every year thing. We're just gonna have to with increasing costs of staff. Michelle, do parents have the option of um, just going a number of hours, like five hours a week or 10 hours a week, or is it? We kind of, time? last year when we restructured the rates, we kind of set like, if your hours are zero to this, this is your rate. Because having those people just a couple hours a day, then that kid is holding that whole spot for the day, which was, was creating a lot of issues. So we kind of did that. We may have to look at doing that differently again. I'm not sure, maybe going to a flat rate. I don't know. I just don't know what that's gonna look like. If the student does not attend, mm -hmm. do they still pay? If they're absent, they still pay their normal We implemented pay. that this okay. year. Okay. We, we said they were not in the past, but this year we said they had to. Yeah. If this was the, if this is what you agreed to when you came in, this is what you have to pay because we have staff that are relying oh. on that. So. And all the other daycares in the county do the same thing. Correct. So, yeah. so we're working. We're working to try to hopefully have this budget come in better. And um, hopefully we'll have some better numbers for you in November. But right now, um, we're showing a large transfer to be able to cover the costs and showing a projected fund equity of 4000 at the end of that year. I'm glad to see some movement towards more positive income mm -hmm. because it's a great program. Right. Like right. Tweak it right. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's just it. You just gotta figure out what is the right way to go. Um, and then in the food service fund, again, this is pretty similar to this year's budget. You're basically relying mainly on federal reimbursement. So that's highly related to your student population and, and your reimbursement rates. And then obviously we're gonna have some increases in staffing costs and food costs and those kind of things. So I've increased those slightly to account for what I think could happen. So again, we're showing that we're gonna um, dip into the fund equity of food service by $33,000, leaving the ending fund balance at $697,031. I've run the general calculations and I don't think that we're gonna have to have a spend down plan this year as we have in the past. I think that we have been spending down funds like we need to. So um, it's three months of your average operating expenditures is all you're allowed to have in a fund equity and I think we're good. So hopefully we won't have to deal with that this year. And then again, the debt service fund is just taxable values and then showing the money coming in for the QZAB and um, basically doing the debt service payments. So again, it's all taxable values and we're projecting to end the year with 5,285,853, which will be fine moving forward to continue paying down the debt. And then on sinking fund, again, is largely based on taxable values. Um, so we're looking at um, 
Also having about $2,599,161 in a fund balance. We don't have any current projects in the plans right now, but I'm sure as the year goes on, we will devise plans for what we need to do around the district and use some of these funds to cover that. And then lastly, this is again, this is basically the exact same numbers as this year for the student activity funds because you just don't know. You don't know what they're going to fundraise for. Um, so that is in general all of the budgets. Does anybody have any questions about next year's budget? Yes. I knew you would. <laughs> Several years ago, on a yearly basis, the state of Michigan would provide us with a fund balance or a foundation allowance. Mm -hmm. And then three or four months later, they would claw back most of it mm -hmm. or all of it or even more than that. Mm -hmm. And I, when was the last time the state of Michigan did that to us? I want to say, honestly, was it 2010, 9, 10? I think it was last after that. Was it after I've that? I've on the boards in 2010. I remember it occurring. Okay. So that's all. Might have been 11. It would have been well, pre-Snyder, though. I'm just trying to think governors, because I don't think Snyder ever ever clawed back money. I can't recall. I but just, before, I, before that was Granholm. Well, and I think now a lot of it happens through the retirement money, because, again, they, they haven't landed where they're going to be with the retirement rate. They're saying the unaccrued liability has been paid down, and so they're trying to reduce that amount. But the problem with doing that is right now they're giving us the money to cover that. So if they reduce that rate, what are they going to do with that excess money that they've been giving us? And so we're trying to, they're trying to come to some agreement as to either leave the rate the same and continue giving us that money or figure somewhere else out in the school budget that you can put that money. So that's kind of what they're going back and forth on right now. So, so my question is, does anybody expect that the state of Michigan is going to claw back some of this money? Unless they do it through the retirement funds, I don't, I don't see that happening. There's been no, there's been no mm -hmm. speculation on that, especially since it's an election year. Right. Well, that's right. This is the highest it's been in right. 10 years. Yeah. Ten years. Right. And before that, 7000 was around for like seven years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't do anything. And then when they, like you said, when they gave us money, then they changed their mind and took it back. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I, I mean, mm -hmm. we're looking good now. Right. Just the other thing I forgot to mention is with the sinking fund, we did have a Headley rollback. So we were collecting 0.9955, and this um, upcoming year it will be point, oh, wait, it was 0.9646, sorry. So it will be reduced back to 0.9603. So that's due to taxable values increasing faster than inflation. So. Mm -hmm. Our general fund is okay with the 18 mils, but the sinking fund is going to take a little bit of a hit on that. So I did account for that in the revenue piece of the sinking fund budget. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry to come in late. It's okay. No. <laughs> I, I forgot to thought everybody was having conversations. That was very really like, hey guys. <laughs> I think I missed an email or something. I'm Melissa. Um, any heads up? Do you know if Todd is going to want this? I have no idea. So he's right there. Yeah. Do you want this laptop? Well, yeah, I think I got it on the pin drive, so I can. Okay. Okay. Heard most of it. I can give it a whirl. What's that? Sorry, I have to have another one. I think you and I might have got here around the same time. I don't know. Let's see if this screen's Hey, it's all right. You can do this. Thank you. She just asked me. It just started. Right. Heather's one of the kids. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Did you find out what was my question? Refugee schools. We haven't said the pledge yet, so I, I was just informed we haven't said the pledge, so I can wait. Watch you hobble over there. Oh, I'm not hobbling. <laughs> and then on the BPU, we're investigating that. I'm not sure what's going on there. 
Oh, I brought a paper. We did the pledge before the um, before the budget hearing. Right. Yeah, for the speaker. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because I'm actually here now. I'm always late too. Don't worry. Oh, God. Well, thank God. I'm sorry, everybody. I didn't. I must have missed something somewhere. Here's that paper we're talking about. Okay. Three and four. Three and four. Yeah, so right here. Yeah. Yeah. Larson and this was the biggest one that I noticed the difference in. But we're mm -hmm. investigating. Oh, yeah. We're talking to them to try to figure it out. Okay. Good. Gary, congratulations. We haven't even. Brian, congratulations. They've not been approved. Well, I'm going to say yes. No. Spoiler alert, it's all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sucker for We're gonna, we're gonna do it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I was just crossing <laughs> the here. No, we're going to do it because all these, all these real people showed up. I saw no money out of the back. I think I can eat so there's change in time. <laughs> we're going to have a roll call. <laughs> all right. Member Steele? Here. Member Lyon Welsh? Here. Member Frederick? Here. Tardy. Member Lanford? Right. Tardy. Member Holbrook? Still here. Member Dean? Here. There she is. Absent. Member Lake? <laughs> here. Yeah. All right, the first thing I'd like to apologize for missing graduation. And I would like to thank Dr. Lanford for filling in and providing leadership at that particular I think a hell of a day to quit uh, sniffing glue off that. <laughs> and you look professional, mm. which I was gonna wear my rarely derby happens suit. here in this room. I was going to wear my derby suit. All right. So, Mr. Farmer, you're up. All right. Well, hey, thanks for uh, thanks for having me. Uh, just kind of a recap of everything that I I put in that uh, program for you guys. So, let's see if I can get this right. So. Um, you know, one of the big things I think that I, I'm always real proud of is just the number of participants that we have in athletics. Um, I'm not going to read these numbers for you because you see them in, in the, but uh, with boys and girls at the high school, we have 353 total kids that are participating in athletics. So that represents about 40% of our, of our population. Um, one of the things that I get asked all the time is numbers. Why are, why is our participation numbers low? Um, and why are we in class A um, with, with the numbers that we have? So if you take a look, uh, and, and really class A in basketball and in volleyball. And uh, for basketball, 833 kids or above is considered class A. And what the MHSA tries to do is they divide it into four equal um, number wise for each division. So what you will see is Petoskey and Cadillac, they have 834 kids, and East Kentwood, which is the largest school district in Michigan, has 2,838. So I mean, that, that's a huge discrepancy. So when it comes to us, which is what I care about, um, and the same thing with the see in volleyball, 830 they consider class A. So we've got, next year we're gonna have 900 kids in our high school. And so now we are competing against schools that have three times as many students as, as what we do. Um, so what the state is starting to look at, when I say the state the MHSAA, is what they're starting to look at is maybe go to five divisions. Um, because again, 800 or 900 kids compared to 283. So if you want to play, I'll, I'll just use East Kenwood because I have it on there. If you want to play basketball for East Kenwood, that's all you do. Whereas here we try and have as many kids play as many sports as possible, and you can see that from the from the earlier slide, how many kids that we have that are multiple sport athletes. So next year again, we've got 900 kids for the 24-25 school year, and currently we've got 30% of our population is Arabic. Um, I know that's not a shock to, to a lot of you, so that, but that roughly comes out to about 270 kids. Well, and we're basically almost 50-50 boys to girls. And unfortunately, the girls cannot participate in any sports whatsoever. So what that does, you take 135 kids, so we would really have about 765 kids that can participate in athletics. So if we were to take that number, 765, and divide it by 900, it's about 46% of our population that participates in sports. So we get a real bang for the buck um, with everything that, that you guys help provide for, for the athletic uh, department. Todd, can you get a waiver for the 135? Not at all. 
because they're they're eligible, they just choose not to. It's a religious thing, isn't it? It is. It, it's it's really based. Yep, it's, it's based on their fathers because. In Dearborn, there's a lot of girls over there that participate. And we have some in the middle school, we had some in the past, but when they get to high school, they just haven't participated. Um, I talked to, to Mr. Yule, and my suggestion to him was we should really base it off of physicals turned in. I mean, your larger schools, like I showed you with East Kentwood, you're still gonna have more kids. Um, but when you start looking at other schools, I'll use Lumen Christie, who was in our conference, They've got roughly 300 kids, but they've got 95% participation rate. So they're competing with about the same number of kids as what we are, but yet when you look at where they're ranked, they'll, they're in Division Three or Division Four in some sports or Division Seven in football. Um, so it's, you kind of comparing apples to oranges a little bit. On with the pitchers. So this past fall, uh, boys won the conference championship in soccer. Our girls were the I-8 swim champions. So this was something new that we did this past year. We're not, in swimming, we don't necessarily have a conference. Uh, we are in the SMAC, uh, officially in the SMAC, but we've got uh, five schools in the I-8 that have swimming, and we just find the time to, to swim against them, and we bake, base our rankings um, off how we do in a dual meet. So there's no end of the season meet for, for swimming, but the, the girls won it for this past year. Uh, here are our fall athletic, or excuse me, fall all conference student athletes. And again, uh, I think this is year six that we've done our purple game. And what we're going to do this year is I've got a meeting set up with, with two other folks. Um, with the uncertainty of what's happening with the hospital, uh, we are going to create a purple fund where we can manage that money ourselves. Because right now we're sending it, used to send it to, to cold water. Now we're sending it to Toledo. No idea what's happening to it. They've never shared with what they do with it with us, so we want to be in more control of what are we doing um, with, with this money and, and making sure that we take care of our people. Just some more pictures of the, of the fall. Uh, this past fall, two ladies that qualified for the swim and dive. Um, Mr. Delaney had a great idea and we did a staff appreciation night, and so was any varsity soccer player someone that meant something to them and that was a staff member at, at Coldwater um, and it ranged all the way from elementary all the way up to to the high school and the high school staff got to wear their jersey and some jerseys were pretty snug on, on some fellas <laughs> um, but uh, you know it was a great night and I'm, I'm glad he thought of it and, and went through with it this past year we also did something new um, I know the the principal over at Maxwell Max Larson pretty well and her and I came up with this idea of uh, on Fridays our fall sports teams would greet the little dudes and dudettes off the buses, getting them out of the car, welcoming them into the building. And so this is just some of the kids just shaking them, giving them high fives and welcoming them, making it a, a, a great day. Uh, we continue on with our poster signing for our volleyball team. Uh, this past winter, uh, girls were conference champions in bowling. Our girls basketball team, uh, district champions. Charlotte was uh, all state in gymnastics again. Uh, these were our qualifiers for the swim and dive, most numbers that we've ever had for the boys team. And here are our winter all conference members. And here's our spring all conference members. This past spring, Ellie Foley, uh, I think, I believe she took fourth again in the state uh, in the shot put. Uh, one of my most favorite nights of the year is the I-8 I Scholar Athletes. Now these are seniors that have earned a varsity letter in two, of their, in two sports their senior year, and we just take the top 10 kids. Um, and it's, it's a great night. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it because my wife got an award for something else. So, But uh, it, it's a wonderful night, and um, I can't remember where we're at next year, but trying to get it to our place. Continuing on with the... Uh, uh, stick it for a cure. This past year, we, when, when we were talking to all the players, the gymnasts, um, one of the girls said something I thought, or the coach, you know, the seniors, hey, tell us something that you're going to remember. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and the gymnast from the other side of the state said, I've been coming to this meet for all four years. This is my most favorite meet. I love coming to this thing. So it just makes me feel good that not, not only are we touching people's lives here, but across the state, and, and it's such a great event. 
Here was our uh, All uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, we inducted nine this past year. Um, probably bit off a little bit more than we could chew, but we got all nine of them in. I doubt we'll induct nine again. But uh, again, another great night. And as you guys know, March is reading month, so we've got some, some kids that uh, will go over. They read to Max Larson. Um, again, I don't know who gets more out of this. Um, I think the teachers love it because the kids are actually quiet and listening to what the, the high school kids are reading. Um, but the high school kids, are, it's, they just love giving back. And so this was the group that read at Max Larson. These guys were over at Jefferson. This past year, we went to the first time ever, went to the Women in Sports Leadership. Uh, lady in the middle is Kathy George. She was the Michigan State Volleyball head coach and uh, took four girls. When they came back, we sat down and kind of started to come up with a plan. What can we do? How can we incorporate this? What do we need to do to get this going here at, at school? Um, and we're kind of in talks right now trying to figure out how can we branch this off into the league as well so we can get more leadership. Uh, we are going to be seeing everybody in the league more than anybody else, so let's try and work together with each other and solve problems before they even start on the field of competition. Last year I talked to you about how we were going to start the Unified Sports Program, <coughs> and we kicked it off this past year. Our first event was a, was a basketball game, and you know, you hear this, some might hear this all the time, curse of knowledge, and you know, me just going to an athletic event, you just kind of some of these kids have never been to an athletic event. They didn't know how to act. They didn't know what to say. They didn't know what to do. So our high school kids were teaching them, when do you cheer? What do you say? What do you do? Um, it, it, it was phenomenal. And, and so what we want to do is, you know, think big, start small, but just start. So this past year we just started. Here's some of the kids that made some of their signs. We also did a bowling trip, went, uh, went over to strike zone. And this was the whole group. Um, now, these gentlemen and ladies did this on their own. I just gave them the opportunity. To, it's called the Night to Shine. And this is held right downtown, uh, right across the street from the high school. And this is a T Tim Tebow uh, Foundation. And uh, I can tell you what Tim Tebow is if you don't know. If you, otherwise, we can keep going. Um, and what these guys do, it's, it's, a, it's a prom for anybody with special needs. Um, and at any age. So these four uh, volunteered their time to go and just spend a couple hours with, with, uh, with some of these special needs kids. It, it was a wonderful evening. This past spring, uh, I got an email uh, from a lady that was in a panic because uh, they were supposed to do track and field for their kids for, at Waldron over at Menden. And uh, Menden canceled on them. And she sent me an email, said, hey, can we come to the track? And I said, absolutely, what a great time. So we brought out our Unified Sports Program. The, the Waldron kids had it all set up. They did the announcing, talked. Our kids just kind of helped them out a little bit, set up a, just a, a, a track just for that they can race around. This was when they were doing their quarter lap. A lot of faces, a lot of smiles, um, again, I'm not sure who gets more out of it. Um, here are two of our student athletes that are going to be competing at the next level. Coming up in September, uh, for those that know, this is Kim Nichols. Kim is going to be inducted into the Michigan High School Coaches uh, Association Hall of Fame for her work and everything that she's done with gymnastics. Former athletes competing at the next level. This is Olivia Foley. Olivia was uh, player of the year, co-player of the year at Division III Volleyball. Um, two-time national championship with her team. She's going to go back for one more year. Uh, and this is Dylan Taggart. Dylan um, qualified for the Olympic trials, which was he competed this, what is today, Monday? Competed on Saturday. Um, unfortunately, if he would have thrown what he normally throws, he would have placed ninth, would have got him into the finals, but he finished 15th. Um, he finished third at the national championships. He's got one more year uh, to go at South Carolina, and he could get one more with his uh, with the COVID year. Please make sure you follow us, and always thank you for your support. What questions might somebody have? Uh, that was pretty thorough. <laughs>
Bob, I got, you asked me a question last year, why do we have more away events than home events? And I, I don't, and this has been bugging me all year because I don't know if I answered it. So if you take a look sometimes in the fall, if we have three volleyball teams and all three are going away, well that means we don't have a home event. So those things, and then same thing when springtime rolls around. Sometimes we have two, base, JV, JV, varsity, baseball, softball, they might be away so we don't have a home event. So that's why they, but what we try and do is make sure all league events that we have 10 home or 12 or whatever it is, we have even home and away. So sure. I just want to say that has been bugging me and I wanted to make sure I... Thank you. But again, thank you for all your support and uh, looking forward to next year. Thank, thank you, you very Mr. Farley. Very nice. Uh, next we have the request for public participation. Would anybody like to address the board? Thank God. Uh, the approval of the minutes from May 20th. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> motion passes. Uh, agenda additions and deletions. The only addi addition is the Todd Farmer presentation, I think. Which I heard was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> or going to be awesome. where we were. You <laughs> <laughs> should have been where we were. <laughs> There's nothing else, right? Nope. Uh, consent agenda, communication, personnel recommendations. Mr. Flynn, a pretty good list. <coughs> so, under personnel rec uh, recommendations, be it resolved that relative to certified staff recommendations, the Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to employ Ray Henderson for the full-time second grade teaching position at Jefferson Elementary, effective the 24-25 school year. Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to employ Miranda Dominique for the first grade teaching position at Max Larson Elementary, effective 24-25 school year. Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to hire Megan Collins for the kindergarten teaching position at Max Larson Elementary, effective the 24-25 school year, pending background check. The Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to hire Gary Dancer for the position of Director of Curriculum and Instruction in State and Federal Programs, effective July 1. The Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to employ R Brian Shirk for the Assistant Principal position at Coldwater High School, effective August 1. The Board of Education accept with regret the resignation of Kayla Sellers, English teacher at Coldwater High School, effective August 31. Board of Education accept with regret the resignation of McKenna Arbel, kindergarten teacher at Max Larson Elementary, effective August 31. Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to hire the following employees for curriculum chair positions, effective the 24-25 school year. Do I typically read all these? Uh, that's too many. Okay. Um, that are included in your agenda. Relative to super, uh, support staff recommendations, the Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to employ Heather Scheidler for the full-time media clerk position at Lake Middle School, effective the 24-25 school year. The Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to hire Amber Troxel and Brenda Woods as sub-bus drivers for Coldwater Community Schools, effective immediately upon, upon board approval. The Board of Education accept with regret the resignation of Aya Haljan from the part-time ELL support person uh, position at Max Larson Elementary, effective May 31. The Board of Education accept with regret the resignation of Lyle Armstrong from the, uh, the part-time paraprofessional position at Max Larson Elementary, effective immediately upon board approval. And the Board of Education approved the administrative recommendations for the following extra duty positions as outlined below. Mike Murphy, resignation of uh, LMS tennis coach, Kayla Sellers, resignation of JV boys and girls tennis coach, and Mohammed Alman uh, for the position of JV, JV boys soccer coach. Thank you. Uh, going back to these uh, department chairs, yeah. are there any new ones or are they all the same as last year? I believe they're all the same. All right. Uh, next we have the approval and acceptance of gifts via member Lion Welch. Recently the administration was made aware of the following gifts offered by the donors. Um, Coldwater Cardinal Boosters gave monetary funds to pay for the hotel rooms for the state meet for track team and new weight equipment, value $11,731.99. 
and that went to the track team in the CHS weight room. Uh, Coldwater Cardinal Boosters donated monetary funds to pay for hotel rooms for state finals for bowling, gymnastics, and swim and dive teams in the amount of $1,628.66 going to the bowling, gymnastics, and swim and dive teams. The gracious and continued support of the donors is sincerely appreciated. We ask that the board accept the gifts noted and acknowledge the donor's generosity. Be it resolved that the Board of Education gratefully accepts the gifts as presented and be it further resolved that a letter of appreciation on behalf of the board be sent to the donors indicated above for their worthwhile and generous gifts. Thank you very much. Next we have the approval of the May accounts. Dr. Lanford. <clears throat> be it resolved that the following accounts for May be approved for payment as follows. General fund accounts in the amount of $2,2,748.26. Special revenue accounts in the amount of $251,491.38. And be it resolved that the general fund financial statements be approved as presented. Thank you very much. That's the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Support. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next we have discussion items. You want to do it now? If you'd like. Uh, we've been in uh, negotiations with the city of Coldwater over the uh, costs, the expenses of the pool. And it's become, you know, onerous for the school district to continue to put out the amount of money that we're shelling out right now and so we're taking steps to try to figure out how we can afford this pool and keep it open and uh, so we've had several conversations with the city uh, over the last two months four years well yes. with me yeah, two months yes. <laughs> and uh, so we're in the process right now uh, brainstorming ways to get an increased revenue so that we can keep the pool open because it has become very expensive for us to take keep it open uh, and there aren't that many people using it from our schools I mean we have the fourth and fifth grade goes over for a week I think and then we have the swim teams the, the uh, girls and boys swim teams and uh, other than that we're not getting much benefit out of that pool. Are we not having swim class as a part of gym class anymore? I know Diane, or Danielle Kelly used to teach swim a couple hours a day. Are the students not using it as a part of a class curriculum anymore? If it is, it's only one small, um, one small section, maybe a couple weeks, but it's not like right. there's a whole class. Okay. Years ago, it was fourth grade curriculum. Well, I, mean, years ago, I, I know in middle I school, my son took it like that was one of his classes for six weeks. Every day mm -hmm. he went and did it. Is that not an offering at the schools anymore? Is it, it, yeah, go ahead. And I think that was one of Danielle's, since Danielle retired. They retired and people. It, it, yeah, so they, they, I think they go over and there's <laughs> one class, I think they might go there for six weeks. I know J.C. Horman brings some high schoolers over there, but it's only for two weeks, so it, it's not it's not an everyday, all year type of a thing for for the classes. Yeah, uh, Bean, did Bean did it last year. Okay. Oh, he did take classes over as well. Yeah. I don't know, <coughs> but Bean Bean did the swimming for middle school. Okay. Now I I don't know whether any of the other board members have heard things from the community, but several times uh, some of the older community members have mentioned to me because I'm one of the older community members that they can't go because there are no lifeguards right yep. and one of my concerns is that if we're providing this pool for the the swim teams that maybe the swim team should provide lifeguards so that we can keep the pool open and so that's something that uh, we're talking about right now. I think they have eight students right now in a class, but there probably isn't a better swimmer in Branch County than somebody who's on our our boys and girls swim teams. And so I'd like to see them step up and maybe they would be 
getting their uh, life saving uh, and water safety instructor certification so that they can be lifeguards. So the city is using the pool for their swim classes, correct? Their, their recreation department that they've always mm -hmm. Well, they provided. can, the, their community members can use it, but they only have about, do they have 50 memberships, I think, I think, I think right from, around 50. from the city? Right. And, the, and the, they charge a differential because the Coldwater Township never supported the pool. No, and they so, have now, though. My understanding of it is that last year they changed that. I talked to Fuzz, and the township voted to give the township people the same deal that Coldwater was giving Coldwater, city of Coldwater residents. They, they talked yep. about it, but I don't think it ever came to fruition. And they're not giving us anything for it. So we're, gonna, we're in negotiations with the township, too. Okay. Uh, to see and the city did money. not volunteer to give us more money either. Pardon? No. The city did not volunteer to give us more money either. Well, that's under negotiation, too. Well, an issue I have, well, then, and it probably goes back to staffing, is the pool is open while the kids are in school. And then when the kids get out of school or it's the weekend and parents can take their kids, it's closed. Yeah, exactly. Like, the, every time I want to take my kids, I call, and it's closed. But if they're in school, it's wide open. Well, that's only good for the public. It's not good for the students at that point unless it's a class. But I'm sure that the reason that they're not open on the weekends is they can't even get people during the week, let alone on the weekend. But I think if it were open on the weekend, there'd be a lot more family action in there like more of the actual city people bringing their children to the pool. What, what are other communities doing? Like, I mean, Marshall's got a pool, Harbor Creek's got a pool, Sturgis. Or Sturgis has yeah. got a pool. Like, I mean, they, gotta, they have the same lifeguard situation. And the same, what are, do we know what they're doing? So I reached out to a dozen different school districts in the area that were identified as having pools, and uh, eight or nine of them got back to me. Um, they're all losing significant funding. The, the difference is, um, and what we find ourselves in a unique position is, um, if a school has a pool, it belongs to the school. Um, and, and so everything that is, everything that's associated with that is all 100% run and operated and maintained by the school district. Where here there's that agreement mm -hmm. of, of some people getting a, a lower membership rate because they live in a particular area and that's what um, that's what was agreed upon in the contract with with the city so everything right now is being put out on the table for review and see how we can all work together to increase membership increase usage and increase revenue I didn't know until recently um, that kids are supposed to have an ID card and they can get in and swim for three dollars otherwise it's eight I don't think any of the kids that I know didn't realize that there was an elementary kids, that there was a student ID card. So, and so advertising and, and mm -hmm. community um, uh, awareness or community education has right. been part of this conversation as well. And it's yeah. also been suggested to me that perhaps we don't have it open, although it's nice to have it open early for those older people or people who are used to swimming, like at six in the morning. Um, it's it nice, but if, if that's a whole day and most of the activities in the three o'clock and after, mm -hmm. maybe we should change hours as much as, or have different times open. Like have it open six to 11 e and exactly. then four to yes. eight and yeah. have it shut down during the day. I, I think to your point, that's like you said, Paul, about advertising and marketing. Like, I think if there's this much confusion here and having yeah. these conversations. What do you think the general public is like? They don't know whose pool it is. They don't know when it's open. They when just it's know closed. it's not open when they need to go because right. they don't have lifeguards and that. You know, and maybe it's something as simple as having some days where it's just a free day and people come use it and they go, oh wow, you know, like mm -hmm. you know, having a couple like activity nights or whatever like they used to have at the schools there. Yeah, maybe so the kids could be, you Friday know. folders exactly. about the pool yeah. schedule that mm -hmm. might get home. And, you know, yeah. a kid takes it home in their Friday folder, they're going to you know, their does parents free until they get to go. Mm -hmm. you know. At least that's my experience as a mom. <laughs> so those are all great ideas. Okay, and we've had conversations about, you know, going for a bond, you know, just to support the, 
swimming pool, but you know, the high school needs to be refurbished yes. before we sure. refurbish or take care of the pool. So, yep. and we've had difficulty getting that bond passed. So, there are a lot of things in the works, but I just think it's important for the community to know that we're struggling keeping this open. I mean, it's costing three hundred and some thousand a year for minimally. Us. Yeah. And I think you got to keep that in mind. It's not a three dollar kid walking in no. at the door that's going to make the three hundred thousand up. Right. It's, it's significant. And we've always had a community pool here. The other one wasn't supported either. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's a splash park. Well, so originally it was yeah. supported, but it wasn't year round. Right. And it was paid for by the federal government, so we couldn't cover it. And they closed it immediately when they built the new pool mm -hmm. because it cost them so much money to keep mm -hmm. that one running. Some of the other problems with that pool is that it's got ge geothermal heat, which doesn't work very good for a pool. Uh, we thought it was the nuts at the time, but so the city owns the pool, we own the maintenance. So that's where we are right now. Do we pay for staffing too? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All operation and maintenance is, is on the district. So I just wanted to bring that forward for a conversation so that the board is aware and if you hear anything in particular, you know, maybe we can bring it back and talk about this again. But we are working on getting something accomplished, some resolution. So is this the finance committee that's working with them or just members well, of the board? Well, it, it, the original group of board members were Dr. Lanford and Dr. Uh, Holbrook and myself. And myself. And myself. And so we sort of continued that. Okay. So it's not a finance, but the last few meetings have just been Paul and I. Okay. So, because yeah, we were swimming. <laughs> <laughs> they were at inconvenient times for the doctor and the banker. The hospital has a pool too, right? That they yes. use for therapy? Yeah. So that's kind of, because I was thinking maybe that was another avenue of you know, we reached we out reached to the out. hospital. We reached out, they, they declined an offer. What about any of the like actual physical therapy places that are not associated with the hospital? There's that one over by like Goodwill. Oh, there's the Athletico or whatever that is. You know, that's, a, that's a great question. If we could maybe incorporate something with them because especially with anybody who has joint issues, mm -hmm. I mean the the low impact of swimming is usually a good recommendation. Well, I think we did have some rehab place that was using our pool for a while, a year or two, but then they quit. Marshall has that for their people that are in physical therapy for swimming. They have a yeah. When I was a lifeguard at the Y Center in Battle Creek, it was always that way too, mm -hmm. especially because the floor came up and they could roll out the wheelchair patients and then they were. Sounds like we found a lifeguard. Yeah, <laughs> that was so much, I have so much time and I am ready to go to bed for $11 an hour. Sign me up. Evenings and weekends is what I'm hearing. I know. Evenings and weekends. Yes. Well, at least then I can bring my kids to the pool, right? <laughs> If that's the we'll give you a discounted rate. <laughs> for oh, that. that's so kind of you. Thank you so Bring much. Bring your ID card. They have to have their yeah. ID card. Yeah, well, that's out. <laughs> <laughs> Just like their Z passes, it's know. long gone. I know. Uh, one of the things they did when they first opened the pool was they were having those birthday parties with the the floaty that Threaten they would up put upstairs, that, that bouncy thing that they would put in the pool. But so I asked Buzz, "What's what's the deal with that?" And he said, "Well, we can't afford to do that anymore because it takes eight lifeguards." Yeah to staff that when we have that thing in the water. Yeah, so. I don't have eight total. Let alone that all can work at once. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. All right. So if you hear anything or you want to bring anything up, please let us know, some of us. Have you talked with the family yet? Yes, we have. And there is some light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. But not Maybe not, a, not a what we would like, you know, but yes, and because I'm certain they would not like to see it closed, you know. Um, we'll go to reports, presentations, and recommendations, building reports, uh, curriculum and instruction update. Are there any 
additions? Mr. Dance, or are you still considered a principal? Or? Is right now, I'm in the middle. Jack of all trades. Because you're the only principal here. And so I just thought, do you have anything to add? Well, Live the dream. Well, I mean, we, yeah. well Brian's <laughs> back there. Oh, he's yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right. He's becoming a new vice assistant principal. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. If we if we pass. If we already voted. Any board committee that. reports? <laughs> um, yes, there was a budget and finance committee meeting. So would, uh, would you we like got an email? Meeting? Yeah. Would you like any, if anybody has any questions regarding the... Well, why don't we just go through what you thought. Do you want to go through it or do I you can, want me to go that's through it? Part of it was, most of it was the budget. Yeah. Um, had the budget amendments that Michelle just did, um, the proposed budget. Um, we discussed CEA contract negotiations um, briefly, and I think there's some movement on that. The science curriculum, digital subscription, physical science, um, we are adopting for the high school at a total of $11,381.94 to support the new physical science books to go to the board today for approval. Central office quote for painting, this is the outside of this building, which desperately needs a facelift. Um, and that quote was twelve thousand eighty-eight dollars and eighty cents. Um, Is that yeah. power yeah. wash, prime, and paint? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. if, and I need to if we're trying to sell this building, is exactly. that supposed to be? Is that going to be the inducement? Is that they have a brand well, new paint job? It well, I, no, I, what it is I, is I we that, want people to come here when they sign up their kids. Here, it, right. it, it looks horrible. Nobody, nobody, come, nobody knows where this building is. To they they must they 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 roll their kid, kid and then they pull we up those numbers go, to grow. Oh, cold yeah. water. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, yes, it will be an improvement. Let's do registration somewhere else. Lakeland. At the pool. Lakeland's going. Yeah, the pool. We also discussed the um, CFO contract um, for Rochelle to go to the board for approval, too. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, <coughs> no other committee reports, huh? Correct. Finance. Superintendent's report. Uh, just to follow up on some things that have been in place, the security camera installation and upgrades are nearly complete. Max Larson uh, should be done now. A reminder that Max Larson and Jefferson were complete new systems because they didn't have any. Jefferson, uh, the interior's complete with the cameras. Uh, the wrong mounts were ordered for the exterior cameras, but all the wiring is done. Um, and when the mounts get in, they'll, that will be a quick uh, fix. And then middle and high school upgrades are going on right now to, to those systems. Uh, the gentleman who is running all of the wire uh, and doing the cameras in the other buildings is also running the wiring for the uh, vape detectors. And the detectors have been ordered, so we're hoping to have all of that installed uh, before the beginning of the school year. Very optimistic about that. Uh, the boiler at the aquatic center has been installed and trees on the north side of the high school property have been removed as we've talked about throughout the year. And then last week the administrative team attended a three-day conference on the high reliability schools framework and uh, you'll be hearing quite a bit about that over the next couple of months be between Mr. Dancer and myself how we're adopting this K-12 um, as a measurement framework to have that have that uh, same direction conversation that we've been talking about all year to put everybody on the on the same track, the same path, using the same vocabulary and same expectations. So we'll have on our first day uh, back with teachers, we'll have our, our big kickoff with a representative from the company that will do overviews and then breakouts with, with buildings over the next two days. Um, but we're really hoping that this ties in well, we're not hoping, we expect that this really ties in well with our strategic plan that we worked on this year. Any questions about the superintendent report? All right. Thank you. Did you mention the new boiler? I did. Yeah. Okay. 100,000? 112,000. 112,000. Yeah, another expense. <laughs> All right. 
We're going to go to the action items. Next is the recommendation to amend and approve the 2023-2024 budgets. Uh, board actions required on the 2023-24 budgets that have been amended by the administration. Revenues uh, decreased by 1616000 Expenditures decreased by $2,012,000. Uh, projected fund balance is 21.6%. And the other ones were discussed at the previous meeting over, over the budgets and be it resolved that the Board of Education approves the amendments of, to the 2023-24 general fund budget, food service budget, the preschool and daycare tuition budget, debt service budget, sinking fund budget, and activity special revenue as presented. Is there a motion? Support. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Member Holbrook? Yes. Member Steele? Yes. Member Dean? Yes. Member Lanford? Yes. Member Lyon Walsh? Yes. Member Frederick? Yes. Member Lake? Yes. Motion passes. Next, we have the recommendation to adopt the 2024 25 budgets. Revenues uh, expected uh, 38434000 Expenditures 30012000 Projected fund balance would be 20.6%. Food, preschool, debt service, sinking funds are similar. Uh, be it resolved, the Board of Education adopt the 2024-25 general fund, food service, preschool daycare, debt fund, sinking fund, and activity special revenue fund as presented as their motion. So Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Member Lyon Welsh? Yes. Member Frederick? Yes. Member Lanford? Yep. Member Holbrook? Yes. Member Steele? Yes. Member Dean? Yes. Member Lake? Yes. Motion passes. Next, we have board approval of the tax rate request. Prior to the regular board meeting of the Board of Education, a public hearing regarding the school district's 2024 25 budgets was held. The subject of that hearing was the property tax millage rate proposed to be levied to support the budget as presented. A copy of the Michigan Department of Treasury from L4029 must be presented to and reviewed by the Board of Education during the budget hearing. The millage rates uh, presented to the board tonight show that no change for this year to the operating millage, which would be 18 mills, and the debt fund millage will be 1.6 mills for this year. We did, however, incur a headley rollback of our sinking fund millage reduce, reduced from uh, 0.9646 to 0.9603. Uh, be it resolved that the Board of Education approves the filing of the 2024 tax rate request L form, form L4029 with the Branch County Clerk, Equalization Board, and the City and Township Clerks, and be a further resolve that the President and Secretary of the Board of Education be authorized to sign the form uh, L4029 on behalf of the Board of Education. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Support. Any discussion? Roll call. Member Frederick? Yes. Member Lanford? Yes. Member Dean? Yes. Member Holbrook? Yes. Member Lyon Welsh? Yes. Member Steele? Yes. Member Lake? Yes. Motion passes. Next, we have the recommendation to approve the three year Cold Water Education Association contract for years 2024 to 25, 25 to 26, 26 to 27. The current CEA uh, contract. By the way, did they pass? I was, can I, can I comment on that? So, at four o'clock this afternoon, I got the text message that the uh, contract was passed by the union, um, as well as one of the two letters of agreement, the letter of agreement for um, an exploratory committee um, to look at the 10 minute time difference between elementary and secondary to see if something can be done about that, uh, that time difference. So um, those two would be included in your, in your vote. And there was one that didn't pass? Correct. Yeah, there was a letter of agreement that, that didn't pass. That was
questions about uh, formation of a sick bank. Oh, all right. Uh, if the CAA members vote to accept, which they did, the proposal of the administration with request full board approval of the new CAA contract effective July 1st, 2024 through June 30th of 2027 during the regular board meeting, be it resolved the Board of Education approves the three-year Cold Water Education Association contract for the 2024, 25, 25, 26, 26, 27 school years as presented pending the ratification of the CEA union. Is there a motion? So moved. Supported. Any discussion? Roll call. Member Steele? Yes. Member Lyon Welsh? Yes. Member Frederick? Yes. Member Lanford? Yes. Member Holbrook? Yes. Member Dean? Yes. Member Lake? Yes. Motion passes. Next, we have the recommendation to approve the CFO employment contract on Thursday, June 20, 2024. The Budget and Finance Committee met to discuss the terms and conditions to the Chief Financial Officer's employment contract for Rochelle Roby. The committee re requests full board approval of the Chief Financial Officer employment contract for Rochelle Roby from July 1st, 2024 through June 30th of 2026. Uh, be it resolved, the Board of Education approves the terms of the Chief Financial Officer Employment Contract for Rochelle Roby beginning July 1st, 2024 through June 30th of 2026 as presented. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any, any discussion? Roll call vote. Member Lanford? Yes. Member Dean? Yes. Member Steele? Yes. Member Frederick? Yes. Member Holbrook? Yes. Member Lyon Welsh? Yes. Member Lake? Yes. Motion passes. Next, we have the recommendation to approve the superintendent employment contract at the regular meeting of the Board of Education held on March 18, 2024. Superintendent Flynn's evaluation was accepted and approved with an effective rating consistent with contractual terms. Superintendent Flynn's current contract shall be extended one year beginning July 1st, 2024 through June 30th of 2027. Be it resolved that the Board of Education approves the superintendent employment contract for Paul Flynn beginning July 1st, 2024 through June 30th of 2027 as presented as their motion. So Support. Any discussion? Roll call. Member Steele? Yes. Member Lyon Welsh? Yes. Member Frederick? Yes. Member Lanford? Uh, yes. Member Holbrook? Yes. Member Dean? Yes. Member Lake? Yes. Motion passes. Next we have the recommendation to grant pay increase to all individual contracts for the 2024-25 school year. The administration would like to grant a 3% increase to all maintenance, central office, and support staff and administrators. Be it resolved, the Board of Education approves a 3% wage increase for the 2024-25 school year for the maintenance, central office, support staff, and administrators as presented. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Member Lanford? Yep. Member Dean? Yes. Member Steele? Yes. Member Frederick? Yes. Member Holbrook? Yes. Member Lyon Welsh? Yes. Member Lake. Yes, motion passes. Next we have the recommendation to adopt the 2024-25 Michigan High School Athletic Association resolution. Annually, the Board of Education is asked to adopt the resolution as submitted by continued participation in the activities and statewide tournaments of the Michigan High School Athletic Association. There is no cost to the district for the membership. To be resolved, the Coldwater Community Schools Board of Education adopts the 2024-25 Membership resolution for the Michigan High School Athletic Association, which is the MHSAA, as submitted. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Support. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Member Dean? Yes. Member Holbrook? Yes. Member Lyon Welsh? Yes. Member Steele? Yes. Member Frederick? Yes. Member Lanford? Yes. Member Lake? Yes. Motion passes. Next, we have the recommendation to approve the revised Lake Middle School Handbook for the 2024-25 school year. Lake Middle School Principal Jacob Kumar has updated the parent handbook for the 2024-25 school year and is requesting board approval of the revisions, a summary of the updated changes and exact language revisions, 
has been submitted with a report for the board perusal. Be it resolved that the Board of Education formally approves the revisions to the Lake Middle School Parent Handbook for the 2024-25 school year as submitted. Is there a motion? So moved. Was that support? It was. I have a question. What is lunch detention? Does anybody know? Um, instead of serving in after school detention, the students get their lunch and then go to a supervised room so they don't have the social um, impact nice. of a regular home. Okay. <coughs> oh, I thought you didn't know. Pardon? Huh. You've been there before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they didn't call it that. Oh. In school. <laughs> in school. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Recommendation to approve the digital subscription as part of the modification of the physical science curriculum at Coldwater High School. Be it resolved that the Board of Education approves the purchase of the digital subscription from McGraw Hill in the amount of $11,381.94 to be paid for out of the district's general fund as presented. Is there a motion? Support. Any discussion? We're also getting a bunch of free stuff too, right? Fourteen thousand dollars worth of kit that's being yeah. paid for by a grant or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. This is a roll call vote. Member Lyon Welsh? Yes. Member Frederick? Yes. Member Lanford? Yep. Member Holbrook? Yes. Member Steele? Yes. Member Dean? Yes. Member Lake. Yes. Motion passes. Next we have the recommendation to approve the utilized utilizing school therapy dogs at Coldwater Schools. In early May, Superintendent Flynn met with Jefferson Elementary social worker Ashley Miller and the principal reared me about the possibility of utilizing the therapy dog at the Jefferson School. Coldwater Schools is currently the only district in the county that does not have a therapy dog. There are significant costs to the owner for the care and needs to the therapy dog. The district can help cover the cost to train the dog which can be paid for out of grant funds 31 AA or 31 N. Further, Annie Wooleman, uh, school psychologist at Coldwater High School, has recently requested to begin the process of obtaining a therapy dog for Coldwater High School. The administration is seeking support and approval of the Board of Education. Be it resolved that the Board of Education approves to utilize school therapy dogs as presented. Is there a motion? So we support. Any discussion? Do we get do the dogs get to come here for the board meetings? If you'd like, I think that yeah, I, think I, I need more support. Need emotional yeah, support. support for the, for the board I'm yeah. I'm sure when they get I, I'm sure when they when they get trained and, and released to come to the schools, they'll be at that next board meeting. Perfect. So I mean, and I thought that I was sufficient to provide everybody. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a reason just as cuddly. Dog. I'm assuming there's regulations or like, like what you, this as a local company in Quincy training. I mean, is there a certain yeah, this, criteria that needs to be met? For yeah, them? this this gentleman has trained all the dogs that are in the schools and in, in, um, in this county. And he actually helps pick out the dogs and then pairs the dogs with the new owners. So it's not like I could just take in my 13-year-old dog and say, train it. Um, yeah, so he's he's been a part of the process for everything. And, and there are like state criteria that need to be met for anything? There, there is criteria. I'm not sure if it's set forth by the state, but there, there's training criteria, which um, there's some in your in your packet about. Right. Um, but if you have any other questions, any more specific questions, um, the, the trainer has actually even said that he would come and present to the board if, if we'd like. Sure. I think we need to that to certify to help them legally? <coughs> well, they have, they, they, have the, they have to have current vaccines mm -hmm. and stuff, and Paul and I have discussed uh, what they really need. So. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a great program. Mm -hmm. Paul, did <laughs> Paul did mention he was going to see if we could get an attack dog. <laughs> I did not. Oh, <laughs> maybe it was you, not me. Get back to the criteria. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. I think Quincy, Quincy has two, right? And Bronson has one? Or? Quincy has three and Bronson oh, has two. Oh. Fancy Fia has one, too. And, um, and we had, uh, from Bron we had the Bronson dog at our new club meeting. It was very impressive. Mm -hmm. Short of like, I am one of the guys' cookies, that dog didn't move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was pretty impressive. Oh. That's a roll call vote. Member Frederick? Yes. Member Lanford? Yep. Member Dean? Yes. Member Holbrook? Yes. Member Lyon Welsh? Yes. Member Steele? Yes. Member Lick? Yes. Motion passes. Next, we have the recommendation to approve the quote from Premier Finishes for power washing, painting, and the exterior of the Administrative Service Center. Superintendent Flynn met with the Budget and Finance Committee on Thursday, June 20th, 2024, to discuss the need to paint the exterior of the Administrative Service Center. The presented a uh, quote of $12,088.80. Uh, be it resolved, the Board of Education approves the quote from Premier Finishes in the amount of $12,088.80 to power wash uh, paint the exterior of the Administrative Service Center as presented. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. So I have to cross out this note. Why are we doing this? <laughs> Well, dancers here now, so <laughs> just a roll call. Okay, Member Steele? Yes. Member Lyon Welsh? Yes. Member Frederick? Yes. Member Lanford? Yes. Member Holbrook? Yes. Member Dean? Yes. Member Lake? Yes. Most what color are they painting? We haven't decided yet, but we just got approved. Now we get to start to talk about it. Is that going to be a roll call vote? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have anything else? The next regular organizational meeting of the Coldwater Board of Education will take place on July 8, 2024 at 6 o'clock in the evening at the Administrative Service Center. We're adjourned.